They used to call me Rainkeeper. I would turn over the alligator, and the buttons on his back put some dentions in the dirt, calling the rains and calling the hurricanes. It takes out the old and brings in the new. It even takes out concrete buildings, and it refreshes the land. That's the reason they call me the Rainkeeper. The reason why the Seminole Tribe of Florida are known as the Unconquered is because we never signed a peace treaty, uh, meaning that we never signed any kind of treaty with the U.S. With the Seminole Wars, we were pushed way into the Everglades, so we had to use the alligator as a way of food. They would always catch the alligator alive. So back then when they were draining the, the Everglades and people were coming down and they would see the Seminoles come out, grab the alligator. Later on, that's when they would see that they were throwing money at them, so they would just take the money and then that would feed their family within a day rather than two weeks. The one thing that really brought in a lot of tourists was alligator wrestling in Native American Seminole camps. When I look at that, that fear brings me back to when I was a little kid, of watching my uncle do alligator wrestling back in the 80s, or when it does that hissing sound. It's like hearing a song. Uh, 
a man by the name of Henry Coppinger. Well, he was a white guy. He saw he saw, he saw what was going on, and then he basically created these mock villages. They were like uh, they were set up throughout you know South Florida, down there on the Tamiami Trail. He would hire Seminoles and Miccosukees to come in and live there and work there and make uh, arts and crafts, make uh, beadwork, and uh, wrestle alligators. And that was like basically the whenever it turned from just uh, catching for survival to shows. The thing I hear the most is my own heart beating, and I'm consciously trying to calm myself down and focus on him. And it, but it seems like everything else kind of fades away, and all you can kind of see is just the it's just you and the alligator. You know, you're just moving with him. There's a synergistic energy thing going on. And it's not just a bunch of guys trying to get a thrill. It's actually, it's it, it's a it's an art form. Being able to be so close to an animal who's so powerful and has lasted so long, you got you have to show it respect. So I think that, along with all the things that you have to keep in mind about hand placement, what, reading the body language, there's all that going on and everything else just kind of fades away. This alligator again, nine feet long, 230 pounds. Oh no. I don't know where or why I did it, but I kind of tilted my head a little bit. And when I did, my ear touched the top of the roof of his mouth and he just snapped shut. He slammed my head down and he was about to roll. I he probably ripped chunks of my face off or maybe even snapped my neck. It was a weird moment because I was listening to my skull crack while I'm in there. It's like taking a soda can and squeezing it as slow as you can. All the way until you squish it all the way. When I got out of the hospital, I went straight to the village and I wrestled the exact same gator that bit me on the head. And I went through a show and put my head in there and it was something I had to do. A lot of times gator wrestlers will get bit and then that'll be it for them or they're not, they're too, they're hesitant. And if I wanted to see if I was still hesitant and I wasn't, I was still sharp and I was still on point. So I thought I was okay. But that's where I was saying that it's more of an adrenaline thing. Like if you're, if you like that kind of thing, then gator wrestling's for you. It'll always keep your adrenaline pumped up. Whether you're trying to be methodic or slow or be cool or whatever anybody says, it's gonna spike your adrenaline up. I think sometime after I guess the last Indian Wars and not just Seminole Wars is. It seemed like it became romantic to go see Indians doing their thing. Like powwows and stuff where people wanted to go watch Indian Native Americans dance. In Florida, it was like new, you know what I mean, in the early 1900s. So it just became a tourist thing and I think it became a cool thing to see these Native Americans do what they do. I mean, I'd be amazed if I saw a 10 year old kid wrestling an eight foot gator maybe pretend you could live live as hard as they were living in because the living conditions were pretty hard. I think people wanted to see or think what they, that would feel like and that's why they wanted to come and watch it.
What FAWC stands for is Freestyle Alligator Wrestling Competition. It started back in 2009. They wanted to start a competition with all the different alligator wrestlers throughout the nation. Now it's gotten to where it is now, which is an annual thing. Every year there's some new kid that wants to be an alligator wrestler. Most of them are non-tribal actually. There's not a whole lot of Seminole kids coming up wanting to be a gator wrestler. I always say every year that I want to retire, but I love it. I'll probably be in, end up doing it until I'm 89 years old. It's harder. The older you get, it's harder. It's harder on your body. I'm not in the kind of shape that I used to be in when I was doing it a lot. After I got bit on the head, I scared a lot of my family. It scared me. I am no longer wrestling alligators. I haven't wrestled maybe for about two years. With us doing alligator wrestling at our own place, we're no longer doing it for some white guy that owns a village and decided to hire some Indians and pay him pennies to work there. Now we have our own villages owned by our own, own people. We do our own thing now, and that's real important, considering that the government gave us shit pieces of land and we thrived on it. We came off as basically living off the roadsides and living off our alligator wrestling shows to owning a billion dollar industry 50 years later. Before we had Indian gaming, alligator wrestling is what put food on the table, it's what put clothes on our backs back in the day, and I believe we shouldn't forget that. <laughs>